Hey guys, yep, um, not more than a month ago, it's live streamed on the 27th of September. Uh, it's uh, about a month and four or five days. Um, we put out a thriller, a spiller all the way from Manila. The Euro, it's crash mark three against the Euro Swiss franc predominantly, but also to lose ground against the Euro USD. So run about five uh, going on six weeks ago. Uh, we put this one out. It's interesting to see uh, now on Twitter that a, quite a few folk are starting to notice. We've got a guy here um, uh, who's really liking this chart. Just seen that uh, today, he says, read more. He wants to get into the action. So this is a trade that's actually been uh, six weeks ago covered by us almost and it's starting to gain real real ground so let's take you straight into it and let's give you the updates so overall this is uh the macro um we've got history as i've said before this is the third call we've made of a bearish nature for a macro move we don't do small time 15 minute updates uh on youtube for what's going down you know uh, we we like to uh do the big big time frames um, when we do the FX and we like the juice to be worth the squeeze and, and our overall prospect was this particular chart that I've shown you already we were at the 1.5 fail we were in early on that one in 2009 um, we were again engaged as it flipped to the beginning of January I think it was January the 14th of 15 that again six years between 09 and 15 um, and these were all happening at the cusp of year ends as well. Yes, yes, yes. This was very, very close. Look, it's a monthly chart. It was the 14th of that January month because this obviously is the entire month. Um, and the actual triggering event was December rolling into the end of the year. So you've got December 09 rolling into January. You've got the let go, the second Mark II. So if we just uh, highlight every single one of these uh, we were involved in and we were uh, calling. So we called for that big break, a thriller and a spiller. Shouldn't do it in orange, should I? TG Pink comes back into fashion uh, again. Uh, that was your Mark II. This was the original Mark I, by the way, that ended right down there. Just protected before parity. Bop, there you go. This is on Saxo. You'll find quite a lot of variations, particularly with regards to the floor peg fail. That has varied quite a bit, depending on who the liquidity provider was at that time. There was an absence of bid. None of them wanted to bet. That's right. They pulled all liquidity. If you were prepared to buy, um, you'd be the only guy in the room you would have bought real low. And so we uh, have asserted that this is a new sell. Uh, in fact, we were getting in earlier up top here around about where our access is. I'm going to drop down into a lower time frame. And our overall opinion is that you could see quite a big sell off right the way down to 71585, which is our target. You could, in fact, with a little bit of overrun, because targets have typically been run. There was the target from the previous peg fail, by the way. That's where it overshot. This was in overperformance band. This was extreme overperformance. The target was done over there at 1.36. You actually stayed barely above parity. Can you believe that? Barely above parity. Let me keep the mic out the way so you can see me out of the dark. Look into my eyes, look into my eyes. Yep, it's the FX man. Um, so uh, what are we going to be saying to you about all of this? Well, it's moving. It's moving. It's a, it's, there's a couple of stories here. It's about euro weakness and it's also about franc strength. In other words, I expect the dollar to strengthen against the euro as well. And I expect the Swiss franc to strengthen against the dollar. Um, but the main narrative is weakness for the euro is going to drive some strength into the dollar as well, um, especially with the talk of the tapering. That's all narrative. We see it in the charts first. And that's why six weeks ago we were saying you want to be taking this in. We were getting in a short on the break of that grind line and stops just above at 1086. So we have entries as high up in the, or deep in the 108 that are now fast becoming deeply into money. You can see the skidding price behavior you almost had. Let's draw it for you. 
And normally people who don't have context will say, yeah, you've got a falling wedge. You're going to have an upside break. Uh, no, you're not. Not if you are in one of these circumstances where you are actually in an inverted HVF uh, with a downside. In other words, not all falling wedges break to the upside. And uh, this is where we're at. So very heavy spill. Most rallies can be shorted and you're going back uh, down and lower and you're at the 10525. I expect this to start hitting the news wires as you start to approach parity. That's a very unfriendly level. That's not going to be liked by the no disorderly markets, uh, none to be had, uh, Swiss National Bank. Uh, so you'll be looking at it we're down here. There's some way to go before that actually happens. Let's just take that six out there, shall we? And get that properly aligned. Uh, but you will already run into a legacy target over here. Now, I think you probably have some pushbacks, but you're yet to have the real high momentum spill. Uh, no doubt about it. They are seeking safe haven. Are they who are they? They are people that have news about problemos coming for that Swiss national um, well, the European bank and seeing them want to seek safe haven in Swiss bank accounts. This is going to prove an issue for the Swiss National Bank. They're going to start drawing that they're going to proliferate, cut rates, doing various other things. Regardless what they say, they will be forced to back down and they will have to let their currency appreciate against a failing euro a failing euro that's right especially if the dollar is starting to talk to taper um, it's a binary relationship a bit like a seesaw with the euro and the usd if the dollar tapers the expectation is interest rates will be rising quicker for the dollar that would mean um, a wash out of the euro as well not all of it will chase the dollar some of it clearly going into the franc so let's talk about why the you might ask, well, maybe the dollar will be stronger than the franc. Maybe the euro USD is the trade. So let's just cover the euro USD as well. We've also given this trade away a um, long time ago. We called for this to be a head and shoulder. This is a break. We see uh, at least the 110s being run. I would expect a little bit of an overshoot on that. So this is a head, head and shoulder that we've had on our drawing board for a long, long time. And we expected that to break. You've dipped. You had an attempt to return move. You've been smashed down and you're getting a little bit of a rally. But how do I assess whether the dollar is going to be better than the franc? Well, for me, it's quite clear. It's the Swiss franc that's going to do the best. Um, and there's no easier way than looking at the USD Swiss franc. But before we leave the Euro USD, it's very similar chart. It's a very similar chart. So this is a complex double head. We teach you about that in our program. Go and hit the marketsniper.com, book a chat to find out more how you can learn about our take on head and shoulders, which in my opinion, as I would expect to say, is by far the best technically uh, manner in which to handle complexity in heads and shoulders um, amongst any other aspects of technical patterns. I think we iron out the dogma of traditional technical analysis very well. Um, anyway, left shoulder, that's your touch on the neckline. Actually, this turns into a M top where you get a touch even here. And then this is the end of the head with the weak right shoulder that fails to make that one. It's an extra positive. It means that that rally is exhausting and you're getting spanked. Uh, and that's kind of what's happening. But what about that uh, inverted chart that we refer to as the Dixie? Um, this is a bottom that we've highlighted. There's that same head and shoulder. It's actually a complex way of looking at. We've drawn two uh, shoulders here for you. We've drawn the orange version of this where it's very similar to the one you were just looking at. Remember the dollar index is going to have a similarity as an upside down version of the Euro USD. So you have the orange version where that is your right shoulder. Let's draw in orange um, over here. That is your right shoulder. That is your interaction with a 93.2. And that was your other shoulder point over there. However, there is actually a larger draw that uh, allows us to contemplate uh, giving you a more holistic and potentially bigger move that could take place and that is here so let's grab our pen and draw it 
over here. This becomes your whole head. And that is your left shoulder, your head, and this is your right shoulder. And your interactions with neckline are occurring there and there. So that was the original break, left shoulder. And now you are looking for that rally up. That will mean a final revisit to that neckline, which would see again 99.798 just on this inverted head and shoulders concept. So this is pointing to real euro weakness, real euro weakness coming into the system. So let's have a look at a slightly bigger time frame and remind you where you all are. We are the ones that say Brent Johnson uh, of the dollar milkshake theory uh, should have more respect uh, for his call because I think this currency fiat system fails on dollar strength. So there is the up move. This is going to be, in our view, on balance of probabilities, a large continuation pattern. And one of these targets of the two draws we've given you will be a tapping out point where you might rest and pull back a little bit before we go higher and we fail on the dollar strength. Why? Because we've got the USD Korean one. Remember that talk? Well, that never went away. It's still there. It's still ready to happen. A whole swathe of fiat failures are being drawn by us right now as a result of uh, this and they're all dovetailing together. So yes, the dollar will have its milkshake moment in our opinion where it gets extra normally strong as we fail from the periphery currencies that are on the outside of the circle towards the larger ones in the middle. Um, but the one of the larger ones, the euro, goes into real turmoil that gives a real kickstart to the dollar. But first, a bigger kickstart for the franc. So why do we say that? So now we've handled the Dixie, which is the upside down euro. Um, it's basically this chart again. Um, I never showed it to you on the monthly. So we wipe our face there and we show it to you on the monthly. You can see that whole W here and this entire uh, position. We go down, down, down and we revisit. And I think we'll make new, new lows to the downside. So what about uh, the dollar being strong? You're talking about milkshake. What about the dollar being strong? Who's the strong of the dollar and the Swiss franc? Well, to start off with, it's the Swiss franc. This is your normal chart view on the weekly. And those are grind lines. We would expect them to break to the downside, much as these ones did. And if we go up to the monthly, even these. So you can see legacy, the Swiss franc has gained against the dollar. In other words, Switzerland has more key general conservative values in terms of sound money. That doesn't mean they haven't uh, been proliferators to some degree. Um, they're just less bad uh, than most of the other fiats. So if we take you into our inverted structure, that is that chart you were just looking at. I've got it on the daily. I'm going to take you back up to the monthly um, and just let's take the eye off there. That is the same chart. Can you see that this has come up uh, consistently and then has had a bit of a pause? Now, this is what I call concavity. Concavity is phraseology used by HVF method to describe something that is showing some bottoming behavior after eventually expanding a little bit, which pointed to a bit of a pullback being necessary. So you can see that expansion. I normally would draw those with straight lines. Let me do that again and do it better. Uh, eventually you thrash out when you're getting more and more volatile and broadening that we call a trumpet um, and you eventually base out into something that's more rounding. Now this is the bit that I want to focus you on. This is a monthly chart. This is very, very key and it's a key break. And this is going to give you the key as to why being short the euro Swiss franc is actually the best, uh, best trade uh, for the start period. Later on, if we go full blown dollar milkshake, we'll see to what extent the franc uh, maintains um, its strength. Um, but certainly for now, it looks like the franc is going to be uh, the boss. And I would think it would probably remain it. So that's your weekly. You can see where we are when we look at the weekly. Let's just close that and get a bit more real estate. You can see where we are. There's that rounding. And now we have this structure over here. Let's take it into the daily and put the eye back on. And this is what we're showing you. So in short for us, 
you've got uh, three impulse HVF. You had a very scraggy one over here that was hyper volatile, but that target was made. It squeezed eventually. You can see it squeezy, squeezy, Japanesey, he says. All the catchphrase are coming out. The Euro Swiss franc surely to be a spiller of great note. Nice squeeze in the end. You made your second interim. You pulled back to your first. You hung out on the first. You squeezed again. You came back up to your second interim. Again, you pulled back. So you're kind of squeezing up here. You eventually broke up, huffed and puffed, and made your target with a small degree of overperformance. Set up a head and shoulders. Upsy, 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 head and shoulders. Down you go make the target to the downside roll on over even deeper and then we're into the second update got a bit of a slap in the face broadening structure that we're showing you there that's a ascending megaphone on a bare pole that is hvf speak that says you're going to break through that basing ascending grind line for a little period at least but you held that level you didn't run it and now you are working your way up so we have already now, as a result of that, completed, completed, he says. Let's go fat cokey. Let's be a child and go fat cokey. First impulse and second impulse. And you are on the up leg where you've probably done some form of reversal pattern in here as well with a little shoulder break there and you're working your way up. You can put a target on that easily enough. That's a scribble jaw, um, but you're going to possibly tap out for a little bit and come off. Maybe the dollar gets a little bit more of a bid for a short bit, and then we expect to trade up. And I'm looking for heading down. Remember, this is an inverted chart. It is actually the Swiss franc USD. I have an inversions template. In short, that value gets lower as you go higher. So you're looking at the upside down Swiss franc um, to the dollar. I needed to highlight that to you. So the term currency, which is the Swiss franc, and the base currency is the dollar, has been inverted. You're looking actually at the Swiss franc USD. And with it going up, it means the franc is getting stronger. It's buying. Uh, it's taking less franc to buy a dollar. It's already worth more than a dollar, by the way. Parity is down here. So the Swiss franc is already above it. And now it's going to take less and less Swiss franc to buy a dollar. At this target, it will only take 84.8 uh, cents to buy one dollar. At the moment, you're at 90. So that might not sound like the biggest move. In uh, FX terms, that's pretty big. Uh, so clearly the dominance is with the franc, not the dollar for now. And of course, overperformance is possible, but you could have a cooling and a dip, as I've illustrated already, just against the dollar. I don't think that cooling and dip is going to be near as lengthy or as uh, relieving as it will be uh, on the dollar, as it will be for the euro. I think the euro will get very little respite um, during that period. So we've seen that against in this troika of franc, euro and dollar the weakest is the euro we're in a head and shoulders against the dollar we're in an inverted hvf against the swiss franc and we're ready and we've called six weeks before other people are discovering this trade the uh, major move um, remember it's a probability game it's an on balance of probability shout it doesn't mean because we've called it that it has to happen it doesn't mean that we got the previous two right that we're going to get the third right um, and don't forget, central banks will jaw away and make it as uncomfortable for you as possible and create some volatility and throw some money at trying to spike the market every now and then. Don't be put off by these things. Um, it pays if you got in at the just in time area where we were first announcing this some time ago. We did do an update. Uh, so we've done quite a bit of coverage recently on the Frank issue. If we just go say goodbye to that handsome man. Um, you'll see that we were first talking about it here. That's the video we were looking at. Uh, you can see we did uh, a week ago the Swiss cheese roll and you can see three days ago we updated on that bouncing around um, and pointing out the global stress that that will bring around. So it's something it's a hot point and it's coming and it's busy manifesting as we speak. You've had your Monday and it's been very supportive for the franc. Uh, there's clearly people moving money out of the euro. If you are in the eurozone, you should contemplate getting francs. 
even if you have dollars, you should uh, contemplate getting Swiss francs and pivoting out of dollars. Um, but, you know, there's other trades. I'd love to catch up with you on the USD Korean one and all of those other trades that we've provided with you before. Um, but those come later uh, with a dollar spike. I think the Fed's going to make an intentional error that's going to lead to a dollar spike that's going to end the financial system. People are going to want it over on account of dollar strength rather than um, weakness. I think you're going to see a lot of people run into trouble. Turkish Lira is having a horrible time of it. We've also called, and I will highlight and remind you of this, and you could also have a look as a cross pair, the Swiss franc versus the yen. We've called the USD JPY already for 1.36. We don't want the inverted version anymore. Let's go to the normal ones and go to the USD JPY. So we're now the right way around. This structure over here, we've said is going to resolve to the upside. So we've um, highlighted this already. We can um, do this draw for you. Where she be? Where she be? Get him in again. Uh, I need to find that one draw where I've got lots of versions of these jewels. USD JPY. Come on, come on, come on. Need to be able to see them. That looks like one of them. Let's have a look over here as well. So the yen we see going to 1.36. Let's get our all our various versions of jaws up. We don't need the cot indicator, although it's very interesting on a risk off, risk off, uh, risk on basis, uh, what it sometimes shows. Let's just, just go with this particular one. So this is in, in essence the catchment point where we are calling a break on the USD JPY and we are calling for a 136 run. So the yen is going to be weak as well. It's not just the Eurozone, but the yen will be weak. I think the Euro is going to get the headlines. I think it's going to be the outlier of it's already weak now, um, but the yen is slipping. Um, so it's not too it's going to be also part of that. And then we're going to have FX emergings in great stress. As I mentioned, the Lira, Turkish Lira is one of the first you want to mention. So you could also look at the Swiss franc yen if you felt like that cross. It's a bit exotic. You could hedge out the dollar with two positions, Swiss franc USD or an USD JPY. Um, I kind of have a number of positions. I am long the USD JPY. I am short the Euro Swiss franc. Uh, so you kind of have a few of these. I'm waiting to put the Euro USD back on. Um, but there's a lot of correlation in all of that. So you've got to be a little bit careful um, in terms of what you're doing on that. You can net some of the dollar effect out if you so elect. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Of course, dollar being strong is going to rein back the loss of faith. The loss of faith. The loss of face that the Fed has uh, incurred and the Treasury with their inflation. Um, they've been totally wrong about inflation. Commodities have gone up. Energy has been the main driver. They want to rein back a little bit the oil. They can strengthen the dollar. Um, so it makes absolute sense that the taper talk is there because they want to strengthen the dollar to try to hide the fact that they're proliferating and destroying currency and hence why your coffee price has gone up. Only they'll say it's climate change in the Brazilian forest because there were fires. Meanwhile, there's fires every year in agriculture everywhere. Um, it's actually got everything to do with the fact that they created 25% new dollars just in a single year for all dollars ever in existence. So, I mean, these guys are absolutely patently dishonest and they're a criminal cartel that are focused on flattening out the middle class, the Burgoys that they hate and impoverishing the poor and ensuring they become the UBI class that they can then entrench government's role in feeding them. And of course, the billionaires only get richer because they have assets. Assets go up um, even just to hold value in an inflationary environment. And they've created absolute extreme inflation. And you're starting to see it right now. So much so that the huge deflationary effect of a pandemic that has stopped 
stopped so many people, killed so many SMEs, kicked people out of jobs, on hollowed out small, medium enterprises entirely, plus reduced your holiday, your travel, and all other petrol burning, car driving expenses. That huge deflationary effect still hasn't stopped the rate at which our Western Texas intermediate longs are pouring cash on our heads. So being positioned long in the energy markets and then uh, long the dollar against the euro will hedge you against the strengthening dollar on a little bit of a pullback on your energy trades. But keep that energy trade on because when they take some of the pressure off the strengthening dollar, that oil will spike, that natural gas will spike, everything will spike. Um, so it's worth it's a worthwhile um, portfolio of trades to be long the commodity and to hedge that out on dollar strength into euro. Guess who's going to have the inflation if this all transpires as we are suggesting it might Euroland, that's going to be French rioting in the streets, Italians rioting in the streets, lots of anger, um, state workers demanding bigger increases, uh, government saying, wringing their hands and saying, we'll print more money to give to you people because it's got so expensive to live, which of course is like um, pouring petrol on the fire. Uh, they know it and it will further hollow out the middle classes. Their game is to proliferate to make the billionaire class wealthier and the mega corporates wealthier and to destroy the middle class and the poor. And they will continue to perpetuate that game, ever dropping rates, ever increasing QE, which continues to enrich the wealthiest people in the world. So that's your USD JPY. You could of course look at the Swiss franc against the JPY. I think I have it here. It has had a good old run. But structure wise when I came on I was showing you this chart. It was the very first one I had up at the time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it over there. You can see how well it's been doing. Um, less of a clear cut pattern. It's just going. It's just going. You had a small structure here and it's just going. Um, so I prefer the more traditional pairs uh, for our uh, trading. But the key message is, guys, Euro exposure, get out, put it into Swiss franc. Euro homes are going to get more expensive in euros because of devaluing euros. But initially the shock, there will be a bit of a lag effect, so they'll be almost cheap. Uh, cheaper as the currency drops but people won't be rushing in to buy immediately but then after a while they'll start to get home price inflation as well as food energy and all the other aspects um, so that's a very interesting narrative the one thing I haven't answered or spoken about and I haven't even looked at prior to doing this video and I've just thought of is where does that leave the British pound because some of you will be there saying thank God we brexited will you be better off for not being in the eurozone that is the gbp usd overall not looking particularly impressive but what about that euro gbp well overall i'm seeing this turning down i don't think that's particularly bullish um, we've had a big spike uh, over there that was with 2708 britain very financial london then you had the 15 crisis up to there and then you've been hanging the whole time since 15, we're the six years in this range somewhere with this whole Brexit narrative, which is very bearish and uncertainty orientated on the pound. You've been in the 93 to the 83 range, not being particularly uh, big moves here. I see the slipping. I see the slipping and that it being better for you in the pound, but that doesn't mean the pound's going to be uh, all conqueringly strong. The GBP USD doesn't look like it. And we can get up the GBP Swiss franc for you as well, which is our current fighting star, the franc. And I think you'll find it doesn't look particularly bullish on this chart either. Very low, falling over, the franc getting the strength, squeezing into new lows. We can invert this as well for you. We can go back to our inversion um, template and add that GBP Swiss franc. Pretty sure you'll be finding that the pound is giving up ground. So unfortunately, Britain won't be allowed to get too smug uh, about events because they will find uh, aspects catching up uh, with them as well. There you have it. 
that's the daily and the pound is losing ground against the Swiss franc. This is clearly moving up and generally it's squeezing higher and it's about to have a phase where it's going to squeeze higher. I would imagine the higher end of the range making a marginally higher high, much like that, that and that. You can feel structurally this is a grind higher. And you're in little fractal of reversal right here breaking out right now so it's not going to be the best of news for the pound either at least till you get back through a parity I would imagine um, back to, uh, close to maybe not quite through a parity to 108 a lot closer to just 8% difference uh, between uh, the Swiss franc and parity to the pound where it currently it's uh, pound is 24 percent a little stronger and bigger okay that's your update uh, from out of the dark to you on the swiss franc the trade is going great uh once again i don't think you need to stray from the euro swiss franc too much further those two are you know they're absolutely bound together and they are the great embarrassment that highlights the the, sh the shame of the euro land it highlights the absolute non-economic nature and their overall conduct this is uh, still the inverted chart we'll stay with um, the best one here euro swiss franc it's interesting to have a look at it in the inverted actually let's just go back there there's the inverted template hold on there she goes there you can see the previous capitulations this is in essence an upside break that we say is triggered over here and you are in fact doing this this, by the way, was a central bank induced distortion, this block. And it literally is a block where they stood in the way of further euro devaluation. There's your block and that is your trade. And you're now seeing it. So will they try again? I think they will. Um, will it be effective? No, I don't think it will be effective. Um, they, might, they might have learned some lessons and not try too hard this time. Uh, and just let the market uh, reset. I don't know. Uh, the Swiss people won't be happy if they spent all their hard-earned hard currency on supporting the soft euro. Okay, um, that's it from me, uh, the market sniper. Remember, we value likes and we value shares. We aim to keep you up to date with a couple of macro trades um, of a free view nature. There are so many more. We've got an amazing list uh including some great equities outside of crypto there's some fascinating things happening this is reset times guys um you need to get focused on building your wealth you're going to get some major major moves where you can build real real wealth through trading in these markets and it's not what you make it's also what you keep you need protection uh, for that which you uh, make and earn and I would say to you uh, you should be at themarketsniper.com booking a chat to find out how you can be part of our amazing community that we're very grateful to have uh, until next time um, that's your update on the failure of the euro swiss franc we'll show it to you one more time in the inverted in the correct form actually in the uninverted form this is a escalation for which a very stretchy bar will come by the way this is six years apart three times six 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 oh nine fifteen twenty one three six year periods coming to november december with the capitulation event in this particular month occurring mid january it was the 14th of january when we uh, called that one um, and it was an absolute thrill and a spill of great note. And by the way, it did immense damage to financial institutions and trading platforms that had bought into the idea of the floor that the Swiss National Bank was going to stand uh, and defend, uh, which of course they walked from in the end. So uh, yeah, don't trust the central bankers, rather go with the sniper. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye for now.